Shalom. I want to start off by giving our praise to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son through the name of the Holy Spirit. It's called Hallelujah. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, we're called Kadash. All praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son once again through the name of the Holy Spirit. Um, peace and blessings unto the children of God, all those laboring to be in the Spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, Mashiach, who showed us the way, which is His course of conduct. Shalom. Um, Mr. Brother Yutazakai. Brother Yitzhak Zakai from the Living Word Church here in Atlanta, Georgia, coming back this with another lesson through the Spirit and the Power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah Bashem, Rakai Kadash. And um, this is just a, a, a part two, I mean, a part three. It's really supposed to be a part two, but a part three um, to the um, to the lesson I just uh, most previously did, which is uh, brothers be acquainted with brothers' sufferings genuinely. And um, I pretty much broke down this scripture here in Hebrews 13 and 3. This is what we left off at, but I'm just going to break it out one more time. It's Hebrews 13 and 3. Once again, it says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Right? So when you, when you see somebody suffering, you know, or if someone is suffering or someone is going through hardship or something, you're supposed to, uh, you, you're supposed to uh, envision if, as, as if it was you. You know, as if it was you, because you're supposed to see yourself in your brother. You know, you're supposed to see yourself in your brother. You know, and also you're supposed to uh, have uh, have compassion upon your brother when you see them going through tribulation. You know, what I'm saying when you see them afflicted or you see them suffering, or you're supposed to, even if they're not, if you don't see it, you're supposed to be considerate of maybe they can be, or you know, the variables of how they could be. You know. So let's go to this next one. Um, this is 2 Corinthians 11 and 29. It says, who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? Right, because Apostle Paul was in the right spirit, okay? Apostle Paul was in the right spirit. He was being acquainted with his brother's sufferings genuinely, you know? So when he felt somebody was weak, he was weak. You know what I'm saying? When he felt somebody was offended, he was burning. You know, matter of fact, let's get with that word, burn. Let's lock in. Let's lock in. Like, basically ignited. Yeah, like, indignant. Yeah. Yeah, anger. Grief. To be inflamed. Right, so to be ignited, like to be inflamed because somebody's offended. You know what I'm saying? So if, if one of our brothers offended or if one of our brothers is weak, we're supposed to feel weak. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't want our brothers to uh, feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or um, we're supposed to understand what it's like to, to be weak and not have strength and, you know what I'm saying, want to be a defender of the forlorn or the weak. You know, when, when we see somebody offended, you know, this is supposed to ignite us with anger you know what i'm saying we don't want our brothers to be offended you know what i'm saying we don't want to see our brothers in you know in offense or you know uh get caught up in the offense you know this 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 will ignite us because we don't want to see our brothers harmed we don't want to see our brothers um in in bad situations you know what i'm saying this and this and this is a part of our service you know this is this is a uh this is a part of our service because like uh I read 30, it says, verse 30, it says, if I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. So this is a part, our infirmities is what we take glory in, you know what I'm saying? Uh, ha having uh, our, our brothers being uh, offended, you know what I'm saying? And having uh, offense brought against them, that's that's something that's worthy to uh, bring forth indignation within us, you know what I'm saying? Because our brothers have been brought to, uh, have, have been brought to offense to the point where they're offended. You know, and this is supposed to uh, help uh, fuel us to want to continue to serve the Lord because our, our brothers have been offended and we want uh, we and we don't want them to be offended. You know, we, we don't want them to be offended for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So we continue in labor in the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. You know what I'm saying? And and a part of that is uh, having compassion upon brothers um, when, when they are offended. You know what I'm saying? Or being careful not to offend. Matter of fact...
1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 13. It says, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh, while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Right, so certain things, if we know our brothers can be offended at it, you know what I'm saying, or if it's a possibility it can bring offense to our brothers, we don't even supposed to do it, even if it's something that's not lawfully wrong or something that could be justified, you know. You still, you still supposed to uh, withhold, uh, withhold your tongue, withhold, uh, you know, uh, your action. You know what I'm saying? Be very temperate, and uh, and also be very compassionate upon brothers, so that what, so that offense cannot be brought to them. You know, and, and this is a part of being acquainted with your brother's sufferings genuinely. You know what I'm saying? Is uh, genuinely not doing something if it can offend your brother, even if you feel like it's justifiable. Or if it's lawful, you know what I'm saying. You still, if if it's gonna cause your brother to be offended, you know what I'm saying. You, you you're supposed to be ignited if your brother's offended. So you're supposed to do anything, not to be to cause offense to your brother. This is a part of our service, and this is a part of genuinely being acquainted with your brother's sufferings. You know, let's go here. It's Hebrews chapter ten and verse thirty-four. It says, for ye had compassion on me and my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance, you know? So, so we have to have compassion upon our brothers and their bonds. You know, we have, and we do that by taking uh, joyfully the spoiling of our goods, you know what I'm saying, for our brothers. You know, because we had compassion upon the sufferings that they've been through. You know, our forefathers before us, our brothers before us, you know, our brothers that's uh, right now trying to labor in the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, Mashiach. We have compassion upon them and their bonds, man. You know what I'm saying? And we, because uh, we, we have so much compassion upon our brothers and our forefathers before us bonds, you know what I'm saying? We'll just take, uh, we'll, 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 we'll joyfully take the spoiling of our goods. You know what I'm saying? Even if that means that we have to, uh, lose some of our uh, confidence within worldly standards or, or you lose some of our confidence within you know uh, our character from whom whom we have known to be you know what I'm saying even if we have to do that you know what I'm saying even if we have to uh, you know because our goods can be matter of fact let's look at what goods is goods can be multiple things you know let's see goods possessions goods wealth property right you know so yeah something substance which we know substance or possession property ain't got to be just actual materials you could possess spiritual gifts you could you could possess spiritual characteristics you know what i'm saying this could be your substance you know and this really is the true substance you know and having and having a better and enduring substance that 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 um uh, that better and enduring substance is those uh, characteristics that Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is made up of. You know what I'm saying? That comes forth within us when, you know, we begin to be charitable, temperate, loving, you know, and joyful and peaceful with those, you know, who, who may be suffering or those whom we know are, are suffering, you know. So taking joyfully the spoiling of our goods, you know, uh, basically, you know, being able to sacrifice some of the things that we want and some of the things that we stand on to be able to, uh, to to be able to make sure other brothers come into the fold, and also to make sure that we're being uh, gracious of the sacrifices of our forefathers and our brothers before us, you know. Let's go here. So we have to take, we have to have compassion upon brothers and their bonds, man, and and we do that by taking joyfully the spoiling of our goods, you know what I'm saying? Which could be, uh, like I said, goods can be a multitude of things, you know. So like it. Second, Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, with eternal glory. You know, so we endure all things for the elect's sake. You know what I'm saying? So anything that we're going through, we're supposed to go through it for our brother. You know, we're supposed to go through it for our brother. You know, that we, we, we service, we work, we labor. This is what's supposed to continue to fuel us to want you know what I'm saying, growing within righteousness and continue to uh, plant seeds of righteousness and bring forth fruits of repentance. What what is supposed to fuel us to want to do that is, you know, the the elect, which is our brethren. You know, we're supposed to see everyone as if 
they were the elect, as if they were the chosen, because we're supposed to esteem others higher than ourselves. You know, so we endure all things that we go through for our brothers. Why? Because we want them to obtain salvation, you know, through the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, you know. So that's why we uh, we endure all things through the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, because we want our brothers to be able to also be able to take hold of this spirit so they can endure all things. And we endure all things because we want our brothers to be able to lay hold on the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So this is another thing that's supposed to fuel us to want to continue within service in the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, knowing that we're, we're enduring all these things within service of Yahweh Shah Mashiach for our brothers, you know. Let's go here. It's Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3. It says, For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest they be weary and faint in your minds. Yes, yeah, so it says, For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest they be weary and faint in your minds. And that's what happens when you don't consider those who endure contradictions of others against themselves. Okay? We have to endure, we have to endure contradictions of others against ourselves. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a part of service. That's that's a, that's a part of how you endure the cross. That's a, a that's a part of how you're gonna sit down on the right hand of your, uh, of the heavenly Father, Yahweh. You know, and, and and this is how you're not faint and wearied in your minds. This is how you get weak within your walk when you're not enduring contradictions of, of sinners against yourself, or you're not consent enduring um, contradictions of your brothers against yourself. You know. This causes you to be wearied and faint in your mind, and you can't continue. You can't stay, uh, wax bold within service in the Lord, you know, because you're not truly being acquainted with your brother's suffering genuinely, you know. Let's go to this one. It's Sirach chapter 29 and verse 15. It says, forget not the friendship of thy surety for he have given his life for thee. You know, right? So we can't forget the friendship of our, of our surety because the friendship of our surety is Yahweh Shah Mashiach. He's, he said, uh, I call you, I call you friends because everything that my father have made known to me, I have made known to you. Just roughly paraphrasing. So Yahweh Shah considered uh, us as friends if we're doing what he told us to do. You know, if we're doing what he commanded us to do, he considers us as, as friends. So that's how we forget that the friendship of our surety is by doing the things that our Lord commanded us to do, in which our Lord commanded us to be uh, love our brother and our neighbor as with, with all our heart, with all our soul, as our and love them as ourselves. You know, and all, and, and and this is how we show the heavenly Father, Yahweh, our love. You know. For he have given his life for thee. So our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, he endured contradiction of sinners against himself. He considered the sufferings of brothers, and that's what fueled him to help get through his lot. You know, and he did that for us. You know what I'm saying? So we have to follow after that example of how how he he how our Lord used his brothers and his people to help fuel him to be able to continue to uh fulfill his lot, to or, or to fill fill out his lot. That's how we're gonna fill out our lot. You know what I'm saying? It's by remembering that our Lord gave his life for us. You know what I'm saying? That's the friendship of our surety. So we have to give our life for our for for our for our brothers and their sufferings. You know, this is a it's like a it's a it's a uh it's like an assembly line. It's like an assembly line. You know, we continue to struggle and continue to suffer for each other and we use each other's struggles and sufferings to continue uh to help us continue to do it, you know. Okay, let's get This Sirach, this Sirach chapter 37 and verse 6, it says, Forget not thy friend in thy mind, and be not unmindful of him in thy riches. Right? So it says, Forget not thy friend in thy mind, and be not un unmindful of him in thy riches. So you can't forget your friend. You can't forget your brother. You know what I'm saying? And, and what he's going through. You know what I'm saying? You can't be unmindful of him in your riches. Like, you start to begin to 
um, you start to begin to, you know, get a, a certain type of spiritual gifts or you start to get certain type of uh, spiritual perks or you start to uh, get certain type of amenities, you know what I'm saying, uh, for, you know, what you would believe is your service to the Lord or, you know, a service unto the Lord. And then you just uh, you, you forget about your brother who who doesn't have a certain type of wisdom, knowledge, or understanding that you have or doesn't uh, possess uh, doesn't, doesn't possess certain type of qualities and characteristics that you possess you know what i'm saying you you forget about them and and you for, you forget about how not having those uh, those qualities or not possessing those attributes can lead you to uh to a bad place or to a, a, a place where you where you don't want to be you'll forget about that because you're straight and you'll just be like oh, okay well this person right here he need to just catch up and just get on point but you uh get on point but you might not be you're not being considerate of his affirmities affirmities about how he's not or how he can't restrain himself from corrupt desires, or how he can't, or how he can't uh, build up the strength enough to be able to uh, uphold a certain type of uh, manner of life. You know, you can't, you can't forget that. You know what I'm saying? You can't, and that's that, that's that's a that's a uh, example of being unmindful of your brother in, in riches. You know, it's when you're advancing in spiritual knowledge or advancing in spiritual growth, and then your brother he's still on a certain type of spiritual level. He hasn't got there yet, and you just uh, and just like, well, F, F that and he need to get right or he's a demon. You know what I'm saying? That's being unmindful of him and your riches and that's forgetting your brother in your mind. And also, another way, you can't, we can't forget our brothers in our minds while we're doing the service of the Lord. Because this is what's supposed to fuel us to want to continue to do the service of the Lord. So we're supposed to keep our brothers in our minds. You know what I'm saying? Because this is who we're doing it for. You know, we're doing it for them. You know, we're doing this for our people. We're doing this for each other. We're not just doing it for ourselves. You know, we, we, we're not doing this for ourselves at all. We're doing this for others. You know, it's a group thing. I'm going to wrap it up right here. This is uh, Job chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came, every one from his own place, Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Beldad, the Shu Shuhite, and Zophar, uh, Zophar the Namite, Namamite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one of his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So that, so they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. So they didn't even say unto him. Nothing to him. And this is no see, this is truly being acquainted with your brother's suffering genuinely. They just came and sorrowed. You know what I'm saying? They didn't come and be like, well, it's so start talking stuff. Or this this is an example of weeping with those who weep. You know what I'm saying? Like, you little they literally came there just to weep with him. They didn't come there to say, like, oh, you're in this situation because of this, or it's gonna be better. You know what I'm saying? All this and that. You gotta like you can't just take like if you're truly being acquainted with somebody's sufferings genuinely a word might not be need to be said to them you know what i'm saying a word might not even need to be said to them if you're truly being acquainted with somebody's sufferings genuinely you'll realize like oh shit, their grief is great let me not even say nothing you know what i'm saying i don't want to further that affliction you know what i'm saying that's a part of how you're being acquainted with your brother's sufferings genuinely and this also is a part of charity, malignity, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's also a part of uh, receiving grace from the Lord because it's humility, you know what I'm saying? Abasing yourself, you know? Abasing yourself, condescending to men of low estate. You know, this is what Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah looks for in his servants, you know what I'm saying? And men who do these type of things, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah increases, you know? He increases, but we have to be genuinely acquainted with our brother's sufferings just like uh elif elif eli fast bill dad and uh so far was you know what they do they didn't even speak a word to him so sometimes a word ain't even uh a word fitly spoken is what's necessary if a word ain't fitly spoken which all times sometimes words is not even meant to be speaking it's a time for silence like ecclesiastes third chapter talked about and this is a time for silence right here, you know. 
this was a time for silence right here and this was and just that silence alone was uh, was speaking volumes you know because uh because they didn't want to be out of season and they didn't want to further the affliction you know what i'm saying so that's what we got to make this is a part of our service unto yahweh by shemel shai and to our and to the saints because we minister unto hebrews 6 and 10 tell you we do service unto yahweh by shemel shai and unto the saints you know what I'm saying a part of our uh our service is, is to, to the saints is making sure we don't further affliction and making sure that you know we do things and say things in season you know this is a part of being acquainted with your brother's sufferings genuinely you know but uh i don't want to rush this out this was edified i want to give our praises to yahweh by shem yahweh shah by shem peace and blessings